Hi everyone, Nicole here for Honeybee Stamps and today we're going to do a little no line coloring with some floral images, layer over that some splattered paint and then add our sentiments. I'm going to start with this beautiful floral set that I'm going to stamp the biggest floral grouping here in the bottom left corner of a four and a fourth by five and a half inch piece of cardstock. And to do the no line coloring today, I did, this is kind of a light gray cardstock here. We're going to be stamping the image with an embossing ink. Any embossing ink here should work. Then in the opposite corner, the top right, we're going to add a floral and some leaves. And I kind of played around with several different florals and leaves, just seeing what I thought was going to work the best. But this isn't another group of flowers, and so we're going to have to do a little masking so that we don't stamp over that line because the colors of colored pencils we're using for the most part are pretty light and I don't want any of the embossing ink to show through the coloring. So we're going to create some masks here. I just used a gray ink to stamp the same image that I just stamped on my background on some masking paper and then we're going to peel that off and pop that in place. And then we're going to stamp a couple of leaves. We're going to need to create a mask for the first leaf. You might be able to get away with not doing that. Um, as I stamped and or as I was coloring it, I realized I maybe wouldn't have had to do that if I didn't want to. So you can do as much or as little masking as you want. You could stamp a larger image. You could stamp even more additional floral images if you want that to be a little more prominent. I just wanted to offset the larger floral grouping down there in the bottom left corner with a little something in the upper right corner. This is still going to allow the background to have plenty of white space and have that just really clean look that focuses in on the beautiful flowers. To peel up those masks, sometimes it's easiest to use some tweezers to grab a hold of the edge and pull that up. When I'm coloring with any kind of colored pencil, I love having my pencil sharpener right there because a nice sharp point makes coloring so much easier. I am laying down a layer of white, which you can definitely see since we're using a colored cardstock here. It's not a super dark colored cardstock, but it is a little bit darker. And I'm using a fairly light hand just to get, lay down that initial little bit of color there. The white pencil from this set is the one I use the very most. We are using polychromos here. They color over colored cardstock beautifully. So you, if you want to even go darker, you can get fantastic results with that. They work great on white. They work great on everything. I just really love these pencils. Very, very beautiful. And I am going in and layering in more color. Now this first image definitely took a little bit more work than the remaining ones while I just kind of get my feet wet, figure out what colors are working, how much of the different yellows I want to add, how much additional color I want to add. Do I want to add something to the outline? You can see that clear embossing ink outline is very visible. So you definitely aren't going to lose your line like you might with a dye ink that's similar in color to the background. I've had that before where I have put that color down um, or stamped the card with a color of ink similar to the background and a dye ink and as it dries and is absorbed into the paper it's super hard to see. The clear embossing ink is going to remain very visible. In this case with my white flowers I almost felt like too visible and I ended up grabbing kind of a brownish color It's the brown ochre, and it adds great texture, I think, to the flower. I really ended up 
liking how it looked so I'm going to go ahead and add even more of this. So I kind of traced the lines with this color to add in some definition to the petals. Added in some more color coming out from the center of the flower, building upon that flower color, blending with the ivory, with the white, until I got that flower looking the way I wanted it to. I have the mauve and a blue in the center. I know it's called mauve, but it's really kind of a purple color. It's dark. Um, and I used that and the blue for the centers of my flowers. I'm using some pine green and a permanent green olive are the other two colors. I have listed the colors of polychromos that I used for this project on the screen to make it easy if you wanted to uh, be able to find those colors in your set. Hopefully that will help you figure those out a little bit easier. I put the number of the pencil as well as the color name next to it. And we're simply going to continue this for all of the flowers. I think colored pencil coloring can be a bit more time consuming than other coloring. I also think it's really rewarding. Um, it's kind of one of those techniques that was my first love. And when I come back to it, every once in a while, I don't, I guess you don't always feel like taking the time for it. And, or at least I don't. And I, for whatever reason, this was a completely relaxing, enjoyable type of project that really kind of reinvigorated me towards my polychromos for sure. I think they really add something incredible to flowers. And I love that no line look. So not a dark line. Yeah, I'm kind of tracing over the lines with my darker colors, but there's not a definitive line there of black ink or white ink or whatever it might be. For the leaves, these are some of my favorites to color. Um, I like lay down the white first. I go in with my dark kind of um, towards the base of the leaf and at the tip of the leaf. Pull out with a little bit lighter green, but not all the way, leaving the center of those leaves white. And then I blend over the whole thing with the white, which adds these fantastic highlights to all of the leaves. I really love how that looks. I also made sure to go over my flower petals. After I have done the blending, I like to go ahead and go over the flower petals, mostly with white and ivory, to make sure that I have colored in the entire petal, that it's really smooth, because you can see that first layer of colored pencil is really messy. It's pretty light. It's laying down that color so we still get some nice highlights, some nice light areas on our flower petal. This is even more especially important if you're going to use darker colors to color in your florals so that you have those nice highlights on those as well. Very similar to the leaves that we've colored. And then of course the little sprigs coming out here and there. I opted to use the mauve and the blue pencils to trace those and color those in. We'll go around. I worked my way kind of from one side of the image to the other. After I get this flower colored in, I did all of the leaves around this flower and then finished with the final floral. You might notice I have a paintbrush here on my table. It's completely dry. There are going to be some colored pencil flakes, and I want to be super careful that I don't uh, press those into my background or smear them with my fingers or the oils from my fingers. I find that having a paintbrush handy to just wipe away any of those little flakes works really well. We're going to just continue to add that color. I love watching these come to life. These are a nice substantial size floral image as well, so nothing too super teeny tiny. I think that makes a foray into no line coloring even a little bit more easy. 
Once I have my background all colored with my colored pencils, I'm going to take some Picket Fence Distress Paint, water it down with a little drop of water, and then pick that paint up with a small paintbrush and splatter it all over the background. And then we're going to let this air dry. If you want to speed up the process, you can hit it with a heat tool and dry that even quicker. Then I want to make sure I clean up my work surface. I'm using a glass mat here, so I use it as my palette as well. And I'm just going to clean this all up. And once that background's dry, we're going to do a little creative die cutting to add interest to the outside edges. And we're going to add sentiments. And I played around with my sentiments. Um, I originally thought I'd use a little bit different configuration of sentiments. But I eventually opted to use the Friendship Greeting die from the Friendship set with the words your and the phrase means the world. So your friendship means the world is the sentiment we're going to use for our design here. Once I have that double stitch rectangle frame, I really felt like centering the greeting looked the best. I'm going to center the frame so that it, I'm eyeballing it so it looks the same on all four sides, tape it in place, and then I've run that through our die cutting machine, peel off our tape, and we've got the outer frame and the inner frame. We want to keep both pieces. I'm not going to be discarding it. It just simply adds a beautiful decorative edge to the design. I'm going to use the friendship die as a guide and layer the remaining sentiment above and below that. In our stamp positioner tool, we're going to use a powder tool on the background first, and then stamp our words with clear embossing ink. I stamped those twice to make sure I had a really good stamped impression, especially where it layers over some of our colored flowers. And then I'm going to sprinkle on some antique gold embossing powder and heat set this. before we die cut the remaining word for our card. And I'm simply taking that same paintbrush, by the way, that I used to get rid of the colored pencil flakes, and I removed any little flakes that I saw on any of the flowers that maybe migrated from the embossing powder before I heat set that. We'll move that all out of the way. I have some gold mirror cardstock from Tonic that I'm going to use to die cut the sentiment. If you don't want to die cut the sentiment, you could always use the coordinating stamp from the Friendship Stamp Set and maybe stamp it and emboss it just like we did with the rest of the greeting. I liked the little layer here to draw your eye into the word friendship. The gold metallic paper really shines and highlights the word. I'm going to use a little glue here, liquid glue, adding little dots of it to the back of the word and then popping this in place. To make sure that my sentiment lays flat, I am going to put something heavy on top to hold this down until the liquid adhesive is all the way dry. I love to use acrylic, pardon me, acrylic blocks because I always have them on hand and they're heavy and they will hold down the paper beautifully. Don't forget the little dots for the eye. These are so super teeny tiny and I was really grateful that they stuck to my cutting pad in my die cutting machine. And I'm going to grab those actually with the little uh, tool in one from Spellbinders here. It's not even really sticky, it's just sharp, but it worked really great to pick those up and I put tiny dabs of glue and we'll add both of those little dots for the eyes. Definitely needed those and they finish it off beautifully. Finally, I have some little jewels and then some clear heart embellishments that I'm going to adhere to my card. I'm adding small dots of glue and using a crystal katana tool to pick up those little embellishments and pop them in place where I want them to go. Okay. 
and I purposely used clear or white embellishments so they again don't take away from the beautiful coloring but I like that little bit of embellishment on the card it adds a little sparkle a little bit of fun a fantastic finishing touch honeybee does some of the most amazing embellishments some of my very favorite embellishments I love these for embellishing all of the card things and home decor things and all of the things they're just amazing so once we have that all in place it's time to put our card all together we are going to adhere the frame first and I used 1 8 inch tape all the way around the sides of this and this is going to be adhered directly to the card base now a little tip it can be a little hard to get this lined up perfectly and I'm going to show you that here first I'm going to try to line this up with my side fold card base and put it in place and you definitely can but it like I said sometimes it doesn't line up and you have to pull it up and it can be a little tricky and this adhesive is very sticky and I was not getting that lined up at all so I'm going to carefully peel that up if you can't carefully try some undo I'm going to take a stamp positioner tool and put my card along the bottom edge line up the frame with the bottom edge and then and the side and simply press it down in place and perfect perfect every time lines up perfectly it's not wonky at all so there's just a little tip for you with your misty stamp positioner tool if you want to line things up it's very easy to add your layers that way I'm putting foam adhesive on the back of the center panel now because we kept both the frame and the center panel I just want to raise up the center panel to pop it up and show it off a little more you could have used any of the different sizes of frames so if you wanted the outer frame to be a bit wider use one of the other ones and it just is a really fun little spotlight spotlight type of technique again we're just going to line this up press that down in place and that will finish off are no line coloring with polychromos colored pencils thank you so much for joining me today for this colored pencil tutorial featuring honeybee stamps and dies the supplies I used to create this project are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube here are a couple more projects featuring honeybee stamps and dies that you might be interested in if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel Thank you so much for joining me today, and we'll catch you next time.